Hello and welcome. This is As Real As They Come, Dallas. We are here with Jennifer and our expert, Masha Barenbaum, who's also a medical doctor, a uh, freelancer in um, different hospitals around the Dallas Metroplex. We are happy to have her on our show and also we would like to ask some real questions and address some real everyday problems that we have today in um, worldwide. Hi Masha. Hi. Hi Masha. Hi Masha. Hi guys. Masha, Masha, Masha. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking right yeah, now. You called me an expert and now I'm thinking what am I an expert in? <laughs> But no, I am actually an expert in airways. Any anesthesiologist is. And right now, with the coronavirus, those are the experts that we need because people who get extremely sick, they need to be intubated. That means they need to get a breathing tube into their lungs and a machine breathing for them. And that's what I do. I intubate people as an anesthesiologist. That's what I specialize in. Uh, we're basically airway experts. And I'm sure you've seen videos on Facebook of the Chinese teams, intubating teams, who go and intubate all those sick patients. And those are their, those are anesthesiologists. Right, right. Wow. We're kind of on the back lines. We're not seeing everything that you're mm -hmm. seeing, obviously. We just see what we see on the the media, you know, and what we hear through whatever Facebook or whatever social platform that we're on. So mm -hmm. what are you starting to see, I guess, where you're at now? Are patients starting to come in there? And come well, some, some hospitals, yes. So far, I've personally been lucky and I haven't been taking care of any of those patients myself. Uh, most of them, whoever's very sick, goes straight to the ICU. Um, so far... I personally haven't encountered it yet, but what I have seen that's very concerning is lack of equipment, personal protective equipment for healthcare workers. That's been the primary problem. We're just not ready for possible influx. Uh, some hospitals are starting to get that ready. For example, Medical City Dallas just recently started training us in using personal protective equipment. Uh, they give us the, all the anesthesiologists got uh, N95 masks. We could go and they test us for the leak because N95, even though many people are hoarding those masks, they really doesn't mean those masks are working for them because it has to be professionally seated because you have to do a test to see if there's leak or not. So today, for example, uh, one of the hospitals that was in Baylor and their particular N95, N95s are awesome. I've never seen one like this before. And it's very thin, way thinner than a typical one and actually fits really well. I had a leak test done with this today and it was perfect. I can actually breathe on it as opposed to this mask that I had before and acquired through another hospital that really didn't fit me and had a big leak. So even if I wear it, it doesn't protect me. Bigger so. is not better. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah. It just, it is what it is. Uh, you have to, just because you were able to get your hands off on N95 doesn't mean it's going to help you because you actually have to have it fitted. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's crazy how people hoard the masks and think, oh, I'm going to be safe wearing the mask. It's like, okay. Well, well, interesting we're, that dealing, they... we're dealing with toilet paper. So okay. that, this doesn't surprise me. You, yeah. know, when you still cannot find toilet paper anywhere. I'm like, what are they doing with the toilet paper? I think I population is really divided um, into three separate groups. There are, in the middle, there is a group that kind of follows direction from the government and what needs to be done and just don't freak out and do their own thing. Then yeah. there is a group of overreactors. Those yes. are the people who freak out and run to get 20 rolls of toilet paper or everything. And there is a group of underreactors. Those people think they're untouchable and they can do whatever they want. It just the way, I think it's a mental protective mechanism. It's yeah. a way of having taking control of the situation overreactors try to take control by 
overreacting and buying and hoarding and underreactors just their their way of taking control is still going on a beach in Florida and party. That's the way of taking control. It's like anything else. Balance is always yeah. the perfect place to yeah. be in. And like my husband, I love that little expression that he has. That fear porn that we all fit into is really not healthy. It's right. hysteria. It's panic. My father is a military man. I remember growing up. It's like, if you want to die, the good way to do it is to panic first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You cut off your common sense. You just toilet paper. I mean, what's the worst happens that you run out of toilet paper? Well, I'm sorry. We are blessed enough to have running water for goodness yeah. sake. Should I, <laughs> you know, should I say more about that? But some people, it's very interested in what's essential to them. And uh, I think it's, it's just a way to maintain some sort of semblance of control in a situation that you really cannot control. That's what yeah. it is. And people I do agree. it in different ways. Some mm -hmm. court, some go party, and some just follow directions and live their lives. So well, here's, here's a question that I have, Masha, and this is, you know, because I've got friends that are doctors, nurses, you know, even my own daughter is in medical school. And w one thing that I just, from my own observation, I, I don't understand who, uh, as, as a medical professional, you're walking into a situation and you don't know who's in, got this virus, whether it's the regular flu or the COVID, you don't know who's got what. And, and maybe you get tested for it. Or are they requiring you as a health <laughs> professional? Everybody needs to get tested. And then what if you test negative and then the next day somebody coughs all over you and you got it and you don't know it? I mean, how, how do you really protect yourself as somebody going into that situation? Because from what I've heard is if you got it uh, and you don't have respiratory issues, they're like, go home. So, I mean, what are, uh, what are they telling you when you get there? Like, what even, do you need to be aware of? I even heard that some people had it and didn't even know they had it. Sure. It just, and they, then well, they got over yeah. it. They're like, oh, wow, I definitely had it. I had all the symptoms. and. Well, so first of all, we, there no isn't benefit. enough tests. There simply right. isn't enough tests to test everyone. So they're not, I'm not going to go into hospital. No, like, no one's going to test me, number one. I'm not a celebrity. Those are the people yeah. who are getting tested. Let's face it. It's very, yeah. it's actually very pathetic. Uh, but right they all now, want it. They all want that FaceTime. Yeah, what they instituted in every hospital is there's only one door that's open for people to come in doesn't matter if you're a patient or you doctor you come in from one entrance you sign in you answer a questionnaire about symptoms they check your temperature uh you talk about possible exposure if everything checks out you don't have a fever you can go into inside the hospitals they also cut the number of visitors that can go and see a patient if someone is in the hospital they might not be allowed to have a visitor just because we don't want to expose anyone and I'm, unfortunately, as uh, healthcare professionals, as, as doctors and nurses, this is what we sign up for. Every day, I, in multiple airways, intubate patients. And I don't know, one of them might be someone who doesn't have a symptoms, who is an asymptomatic carrier, who spreads it. So every time I'm putting a tube on someone, I have all these older secretions in my face. And it could be someone positive. And it is, in some, in some ways, it is hard to deal with because I know that right now I, I am the biggest threat to my family members. For example, I have sick parents who I usually go and take care of, at least on the weekend. I give my, my mom has Alzheimer's, I give her a bath. My dad, unfortunately, has heart disease and COPD. So I can't go there because I'm the, right now I'm the biggest threat to my dad and my mom and that's very hard to know that as someone who's supposed to save lives right now i'm the threat to life because i don't know and that's when then we were talking about those people who underreact and go and party and for like and most of that uh, young people generation z for example or um they the thing is they're more likely to be asymptomatic carriers they're the one who's going to party, who's going to get the virus, develop no symptoms, but go and spread it to their grandmother who will have symptoms and who will die. 
Yeah, to that's be a carrier problem. of disease, you don't necessarily have to have symptoms to well, that's carry a question. disease. I, I, what is the difference? Is this virus now a disease? I, I, I'm confused on, is, is it a virus and it turns into something else which becomes a disease? Well, I'm a little clear about that. Yeah. Well, everyone, you know, some everyone reacts to it differently. For example, you're a couple with Yulia. You, you both might be exposed at the same time. One of you might never develop symptoms, and the other one might get so sick that they end up in an ICU on a ventilator and eventually die. The problem is right now, we don't know who's who. We don't know why uh, some people get so sick and one, some don't develop any symptoms. And the symptoms are also very different. This virus is acting very strange. Um, we have this, difference between how people, what kind of illness people have. For example, we have those um, celebrities like Idris Elba, who I don't know why he got tested with zero symptoms and he's positive. Yet we have someone with a lot, very, very sick. So we don't know why some people get so sick and some don't. So far looking at the virus, most kids have been spared. I know right now there is like a 12-year-old in ICU, I think in Georgia. There is a seven-year-old that's been diagnosed. There are a couple of babies that's been diagnosed. But that's, um, that's more rare than older adults. Um, right now, looking at the graphs and everything, a lot of 30-year-olds are getting pretty severe symptoms. So it's not just a disease for people who are over 60. Yes, mortality rate is significantly higher for someone who's over 60. Yet, younger people in their 30s are dying as well. So we don't know why it acts so different in everyone. And symptoms-wise, about 50% what, what they're not really reporting on TV, but about 50% do get gastrointestinal symptoms. So you might have diarrhea and vomiting, and that's how it presents. Mm -hmm. And some people present with loss of smell. That might be the only symptom they have. Suddenly they can't smell. They can't smell their favorite food or they can't smell someone. One, one physician actually who got, who contracted it, she was changing her baby's diaper. And first thing she realized, she couldn't smell the poop, dirty diaper. She couldn't smell mm. it. That's, that's when it's clicked. Something's weird. Why did I lose the sense of smell or a sense of taste? And that might be the only symptoms or that might be the beginning of what could be way worse. So that's kind of a very, very interesting symptom to me. Yeah, it's definitely is a concern because uh, you guys know that I have immune compromised mother at mm -hmm. home. And one of, when this originally started, I called the hospital and my number one question was, okay, yeah. what is your procedure admitting the patients? And one of the things that they told me, well, you come on such and such floor, we test the patient for coronavirus. I kind of <laughs> tried to compute it in my head. I'm like, for one, it was way too early to even have these tests. That's one. Secondly, I'm like, what about the people that are actually going to visit? I'm like, what is your protocol with that? And that was before they even thought about closing down the hospitals yeah. because we used to walk in and it was in and out kind of thing, you know, like a conveyor. And they're like, well, we don't really have a procedure in place. That was very concerning. And now we also have an inpatient um, friend who is at the hospital and they are, hey, Bart, Bart hey, just joined. <laughs> Bart is the gold and silver guy. So um, another thing, our friend is impatient right now with uh, symptoms of pneumonia. And no, he has pneumonia. He got pneumonia. Yeah. And the thing is, did they test passed, him? They tested him and they said that three days ago. Four, it was five days ago he got tested and they said it might be two more days before they figure out if he yeah. actually has it or not, which is so, they, what, what they told him was you, you probably have it. So they're thinking there's no reason to you know, do anything yeah. extra. They're like, you've got pneumonia, so you're just going to have to ride this out until you don't have a fever. And when you don't have a fever, we'll send you home. And that's basically what they told him. So, uh, you know, what does he do with that? Why is it 
you know, the president can get a, a test. And then once he, the test comes back negative, is he good now? Because I'm watching him and, and Pence standing next to each other within three feet of each other, spitting all over this podium, got their hands all over it. So what does that mean? Does that mean they're okay? They don't, those are two people that don't look worried at all about getting this virus. And that, that makes me wonder. I'm not necessarily concerned more. I'm like, well, this guy isn't afraid to get it. He's got people, 20 people standing around and breathing all over him. And he's not worried about getting a virus. Why? Why isn't he? Just because he tested well, negative because for it they once. They probably all tested negative to be in that room. <laughs> come on. Yeah. You know, their test yeah. results come back yeah. a little quicker, obviously. And there's another concern too with all of that. Uh, everybody's so obsessed about necessarily not just washing hands, but using disinfectant wipes or using. Uh, sanitizer and what we're doing with that is basically killing good bacteria that lives on our hands so during this period of time we are very much at risk hitting the period when we're going to get sick practically from anything just because we did kill good bacteria for our body environment that we've been yeah, well don't so don't for. use antibacterial soap you don't need it just regular soap. Actually, it's right. recommended more than any sanitizer. Just regular soap. Yeah. It's, it's yes. the process of actually scrubbing for a while and washing. That's what's good. It, it, the antibacterial soap is not going to do anything for a virus. Come on. So don't use it. Use regular soap. There's no reason for antibacterial soap. Washing wrists, too, because a lot of people don't realize a lot of bacteria lives in, in the wrist section, which if we don't wash it, we're basically just... <laughs> It's like a picture dish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, our phones, our doorknobs, like that's the petri dishes, really. Yeah, I agree. Uh, purses, I mean, wh where do those things land on? I mean, God knows. <laughs> Not like the bottom of your shoe. Yeah, pretty much. I, I know mean, it's honestly, under there. I've right been in the now, men's bathroom. Yeah. Right now, <laughs> just avoid the hospitals. Like, some people love going to the doctors, love going to the doctors. Stay away. Stay away. Stay away. This is the most dangerous place for anyone to be in. Really. Yeah. If you don't need to be there, don't. System, system is about to get really overwhelmed. So if it's not, and if you don't feel like oh my, I'm, I'm dying if I don't go, don't go. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to take my mother tomorrow for round four of her yeah. treatment, and I am not looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, my god. But that's necessary. This is life-saving for her. So that's necessary. That's why everything that's not necessary, that's not life-saving, should be really be put on back burner. This is Absolutely. not the time for anything that's not necessary. I agree. Well, Bart, Thank you for joining us also. Uh, what's your you. outlook on all of that from perspective of a gold and silver trade? Well, I've listened to what you guys said. I don't disagree, Jason, with anything you and I, you just said, because you and I have had numerous conversations regarding the virus. Um, I'm gonna speak from the gold and silver side. So there's, there's a panic in, that I've never seen before. And I've been doing this for close to 15 years. So I deal in physical gold and, and silver, as you guys know. And for the past week and a half, I have not been able to fulfill orders because there is no physical gold or silver on the market. Now there's pieces that come up. For example, today I did a couple of buys from people walking in off the street, but as soon as I buy it, it goes right out the door and now I'm sitting empty again. So, um, and the wholesale channels are broken, meaning they're closed down. Some refiners are closed. Uh, uh, the Royal Canadian Mint is closed. The London Exchange is closed. New York is closed. So basically the movement of physical has come to a halt as well. And, um, but the thing I've seen noticed- Have you never <clears throat> no, seen I've that? Never like, seen. like in 08 and 09, when everything fell apart, you didn't see that kind of buy off? And no. I, that's that's the interesting part, Jason. I've never I've never seen. Them. I've seen in 0809. It was a lot of people coming in with jewelry, you know, boxes of jewelry, bangles, <laughs> necklaces, rings, and they just wanted to dump out for gold and get the cash because you know there was an issue with un unemployment at that point in time. People needed money. Things were slowing down. This time around, though, with gold pretty much at the same high as it was back then. 
you're not seeing people come out of the woodwork with the exception of now it's starting needing cash prior to this whole thing falling apart no one came out of the woodwork needing cash my bullion business was going strong and what is that that's your one ounce you know 10 ounce gold bars and coins that people buy as an investment hedge against inflation currency collapse a safe haven if you will right so the interesting thing is there that people were buying frantically even before the virus hit but but nobody was really selling jewelry nobody was really needing cash now that the virus is hit right the panic and fear that is set in has pretty much frozen up the physical markets so the interesting thing is you'll see a dislocation of the physical market from the market you see online, say on CNBC, you know, you turn on uh, the channel and you'll see scrolling at the bottom, the price of gold and silver. I'll use an example, silver right now, they're showing the spot price at about $14 and 30 cents. It had gotten down to $11 and some change, but I'm here to tell you, you want an ounce of silver, you're paying $24, $25 for it on the physical market. The price actually has gone up, but the paper market has gone down. The same mm -hmm. thing for gold, which is very interesting. Now I'm starting to see the, the you know, regular folks come out and they're having to sell their gold. For example, bangles like these, rings, necklaces. And why? They need cash. So the fear that is spreading in the economy right now is um, I, I've, I've never experienced anything like this. And I've, I just don't understand what the, I mean, I understand there might be a virus out there, what have you, but, but the fear, if we don't get a handle on this, I think within a very short period of time, three weeks, four weeks, I mean, we could start seeing some serious social unrest as people have a difficult time just paying the bills. <laughs> You know, even just today, you know, or the other day I read an article about the oil industry. They were estimating 200,000 jobs were going to be let go in that industry. And of course, yeah. you know, nobody cares about that. If you're not in that, we're in that industry. I care about it a lot because I'm looking at that because that's what my husband does. And so that's been my concern from day one has just been the economic impact that all of this is going to have in the end. And yes, we do want to save lives, but we're, there's two folds here that we're concerned about because, you know, I say this all the time, the two things you can't live without is health and money, you know, and right. right now we've got both avenues are being impacted drastically. And so we're concerned about both. So I and get what's it. Concern, and what's concerning is that now I have customers coming in telling me they showed up at Kroger in the morning and yeah. I'm getting stories that, they're all out of meat, they're all out of chicken, all out of ground beef. What if the distribution channels start getting interrupted in two, three weeks? Now you throw that on top of people having no money, the fear and panic that's already in the system. I mean, I could see this thing escalating very easily out of control. Mm -hmm. And for what reason, again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a uh, you know pandemic expert or anything, but I'm looking at the numbers and the numbers just don't take me to where all this panic is and fear. I'm just looking at the numbers. That's all. And Jason, I came in right when you were making that comment about uh, Pence and Trump. And I agree with you. If it was a humanity killing pandemic, something you see in these zombie movies, there's a thing called the succession of, you know, want to call it leadership those two gentlemen would not be standing right next side by side to each other. They don't travel on the same plane together. They don't travel in the same car or even on the same ship together. There's a reason if, if the president's taken out, then Pence is next in command. If both of those guys are taken out, then we, you know, go down the line to what the speaker of the house. Um, and, and they're all, and never standing right next to one another. That doesn't make sense to me. The other thing is this thing is supposed to be asymptomatic. Well, how do you know the news folks that are in there, the camera crew, the other people? Well, they don't have it. How do you know? It could be in their system. They don't show any symptoms. That's, That's right. How? how this, it's, it's, the, it's the ultimate boogeyman. You can't hear it. You can't see it. You, 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 and you know what? And it may or may not be there. You know what I'm saying? 
So how do you know what to look out for? How do you know how to protect yourself? So I think it was something really serious. Trump would be in Cheyenne Mountain somewhere in a hermetically sealed bunker. And Trump would well, be- Well, here's why it's serious. Not because it's gonna wipe us all out, it's not. Uh, I think mortality yeah, yeah. rate is about 1%. Really, uh, China was showing 3.4 to 4. Uh, in Italy, it's actually almost 10%. But really, if you look at all the other countries, I think mortality rate is close to 1. Mortality yeah. rate for flu that kills a lot of people every year. Maybe many people comparing this to flu, which is wrong. But my mortality rate for flu, which is kills thousands, is 0.1%. 0 0.1%. Yes. This is 1%. So yeah. that's a huge difference. Problem, yeah, is even, problem is not even mortality rate. Problem is that 10% of people who get it require intensive care and require ventilators. But what's the issue here? We have in the United States, we have less than 100,000 ventilators. Look at the population. If everyone gets sick, 10%, need ventilators we don't have it we do yeah. not have it we do not have icu beds we do not have enough ventilators we simply don't have it so the reason for these that people think are draconian draconian measures stay at home is as we say flatten the curve just means every all the same people are gonna get sick it's just not gonna happen in a huge wave it's gonna slow yeah, yeah. the down pro progression down mm -hmm. it's the huge wave that's gonna really screw it up and we're gonna be like italy where we have to decide do i have do i put this patient in a vent or do i let them die do you want i don't think we want i as a, as a physician i don't want to be making a decision okay this patient lived his life i'm gonna let them die today yes you know? well, so concern. that's the problem it's a, yeah, i don't want to be that have one. the infrastructure for all these people to get sick yeah, yeah. right no, and that makes sense. And but I think the question, I guess, the question would be: Do we really think in two weeks then that's going to solve the problem? You see what I? Well, the, the no, you know? that's why I said people are still going to get sick. It's not virus is not going to go away. It's the at least it's going to be trickle and not a huge wave that will right. completely overwhelm the system. That's what we're trying to do. It's going to be the same number of people getting sick. It just is it all going to happen at once and then they're in a huge trouble. Or is it going to be more spread out and we can actually help anyone who gets sick? And yeah. the question yeah. is, is probably the main thing is about us exercising some discipline also, whether it's artificially created, naturally created, or acquired, non-acquired. Even though we stay at home, I can tell you, we go to the park and I see moms hoarding together four or five children to the playground yeah. while there's another seven, eight children already playing there. That's counterproductive of actually trying oh, to stay yeah, at home. Yeah, that's completely, yeah, that's completely. The, what those people don't understand, the longer they're going to do it, the longer we're going to be in this quarantine. That's the You're problem. Right. I think the best thing that we should have done is just complete lockdown for two weeks. That I agree. Would, I that agree. would work. Like this, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry for my language, but half as effort is not going to be nearly as productive as complete shutdown for two weeks and open it up and you know and that's what they did in russia in russia it's actually a um, criminal penalty or criminal charge if you mm -hmm. endanger other people it's almost like having std and knowingly mm -hmm. having intercourse with other people it's the same yeah. thing if you know that you possibly may have it and if you are told hey for the sake of the rest of the citizens let's go ahead and exercise this regime for now, then it will work out. Yeah. My, in, you know, encountering to our uh, rights and whatever else, but the thing is, it's just something we have to do, whether we think it will work or it doesn't, it's just something we have to try, you know, like Nike commercial, just do it, don't, don't overthink it. Yeah, just well, that's why South Korea was so successful. Look at their numbers. They're not going up. They were very successful because people actually, they were very quick to take it seriously. They did a lot of tests and they isolated everyone who was sick. They totally isolated them.
And yeah. people in South Korea are more likely to follow government mandates. They're not going to say, oh, I visit my friends, you know. No, they're going to, they're doing what they're told. That's why numbers in South Korea are so, like, amazing. Why is it that all these Italians are dying and there's, like, South Korea, they're very steady, nothing's going on. Even yeah, though they their started population. their illnesses about, about the same time. There's a huge difference. And unfortunately, it's, it's very hard in the United States to be like South Korea because we have more of a, uh, we see Don't ourselves as individuals me more. It's we're me less to likely to follow what Garman tells yeah. us. We just, yeah. It's a just different culture. That's why we needed those two weeks shut down just to stop it. But instead we have people partying on beaches. Yeah, and it's very sad. But, but, and their population I mean, is much more dense, too. Now, this is a question for the doctor. But if, if, and again, I believe, isn't there a second bell curve during normal flu season? And typically in week 12 and 13 where we are, we'd be about maybe two-thirds of the way down that bell curve. So in about two to three weeks, the flu pretty much dissipates, right, for the season. In April, so if I mean, are, are you are you anticipating that drop off to be the same now that we're having warmer weather here? Well, we don't know. This is all new. This is totally, completely new virus. First of all, it's not like the flu. For example, flu. Once you get exposed to a flu, until you develop symptoms, incubation like time is about five days. After like three to five days, you know you caught okay. it. Here, it's up to two weeks before you even know. And some people don't develop. And so this is completely new and we're all still studying it. That's the thing. We don't, no one, I, like, if someone tells you how it's all going to go, they're lying yeah. because no one knows. That's, ask you my, this one. that's one thing that trips me out about it because every model is the worst. Yes. You know, yeah. it, you, yeah. every once in a while I get a snippet of a story where, you know, more than 85% or whatever the, the numbers are because there's always statistics that, try and hold up these facts, but that's like a drunk holding up a light post. You don't know how accurate it is, you know? So everybody's got the worst case scenario. Everybody's going to die, but then you'll hear the story about, hey, the 90-year-old man recovered or the 30-year-old guy recovered. And I don't know if the percentage of the people who get it actually, nothing bad happens to them. They, it's like a normal cold, and then they go on about their business. But some people, it's like you said, it's extremely more yeah. lethal than the regular flu. Well, right now we're basing all the projections on what happened with China, but that started at first. And of course we have to take our culture and our society, our population into account. So Chinese, well, thing, so it's it. way easier to lock down Chinese, you know, army yeah. right there. Everyone's locked, no more infections. It's never yeah. going to happen here. Well, no. well, one of my friends, I, I know someone who had to get tested and it was it was kind of an eye opener for me because he had to get approved by the CDC to get tested. He went down to the testing facility in Dallas, and again, I'm just sharing his experience. Um, he he said that they were really unsure of what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. They tested him with the swab. Then after the test, they had said to him, "Now understand, you know, we get a lot of false positives, and we're still trying to perfect this test." You know, don't be surprised if when we get a negative reading or if, we, if you test negative that we have you come back in 14 more days to retest you again. And I'm going to introduce the 900 pound gorilla in the room now. OK, because since we really don't know what this is, then how do we know exactly what measures to take? And has there been any discussions in the metal community with Wuhan having a bio lab there? This is the 900 pound gorilla. Could this have been some type of a weaponized virus that maybe escaped a lab? That's a man-made virus. Well, there have been a lot of speculations, but again, no one knows. Yeah. Of course, like everyone, like, uh, of course there's been that speculation, but no one knows. I know there has recently been study released and they said there is no indication that there is any man-made parts in this virus. Uh, I, can't, I think I've read that I've read it on, Yeah, <laughs> but does it come with a serial number? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Who, do you, no one knows. Come on. 
Yeah. They seem to know there was lot, there was some, there was a uh, professor. I don't know if you guys caught it. There was a professor that was arrested at the end of January from Harvard that had some ties yep. to a Wuhan mm-hmm. lab. Yeah. It's all stuff, and you're probably talking yeah. because I'm seeing a lot of this same stuff that's coming yeah. about. And, and and it is. There's these questions out there we don't know. And then there's also the question of there were a lot of we talked about it. I think in the last one, or maybe it's just I've had a lot of conversations that there were a lot of people sick between you know, late November, December, and January that went in and, and were diagnosed with nothing. They had no, they, they tested negative for flu, for strep, for meningitis, and they said they were really, really sick and didn't know what they had. So I think with all this stuff we're talking about, we don't know anything. And that's, and I think, yeah. you know, to get back to Masha when she said people are not following government orders, well, thank you to our fake media. We don't know what to believe because you're, like Jason said, you'll get an article here that says this 90 year old did really well, right? So you're thinking, okay. And then you've got all these young people are dying. Well, my next question to that would be, what are these young people doing? Are they vaping? What's going on with these young people? I need to know more information from all of this because we're just not getting all of that information. We're getting bits and pieces. So we don't know what to believe. And I think that's where I think these this media and he said, that's a whole other conversation <laughs> we could get into but media and you know for lots of people who are dying like some people yes there is the pneumonia but majority of people who are dying they're dying because of the way their body suddenly reacts to pneumonia mm-hmm. they develop what we call a cytokine storm and just your immune system suddenly goes Hey, why? There's that word, cytokines, and, I was talking about. Yeah, today. cytokine, you develop cytokine storm. And lots of people also develop viral cardiomyopathy. Virus, for some reason, attacks your heart. And a lot of people are dying just their heart stops because virus attacks their heart muscle. Yeah. So, I wish they would just share more information. I mean, yes, people need to be, I think, need to be educated on all fronts. I just wish that they would share I feel like all the numbers are just botched. I mean, you'll hear the media and then you go to the CD site, CDC site and the numbers don't even match up, you know? Well, CDC is behind. If okay. you look at their, like, if you look at the numbers, how many cases, they're going to tell you uh, the numbers are from this day. For example, last time they released update, well, they update. I think it was the 18th. And what's the date? 10 years, 10 days. Every 10 days. Now they, well, yeah. they say they update Monday through Friday by 4 p.m. That's what they say on their site. No, so, no, I mean, no, you go not, over the weekend. No, they're behind. CDC okay, well, I'm telling you what website is behind. Site. That's what they're saying on their site is that they're updating it Monday through Friday. And if you look yeah. on the weekends, it will be different than what obviously from Friday. But yeah. that's what they're telling. And, and my point to yeah. is, I don't want to argue about that. My point is we're getting mixed information, period, point blank, mixed information. So nobody really knows what to look at. And we've got media over here giving us a low. We got Trump over here giving us this. We've got CDC sites, who sites, all these different sites. They all need to figure out how to get on the same page. And they're never going to do that. It's the way it is. And then I would like look at even the WHO, World Health Organization and CDC. They're providing completely different information. Oh, they are. It's like who says, oh, you need to do full protective equipment. You see all these doctors in China, Italy, in complete personal protective and right. suit, body suits with those special masks. And what do we get? We, we're so short on everything. Suddenly CDC says, oh, you don't need an N95. It's not because we don't need it. It's because there's such shortage that they have to say, oh, you just don't need it. And now right. their latest recommendation, well, if you don't have a mask, just put a bandana on. Come on. <laughs> right. Yeah, like a bandana yeah, the bandana is going to protect me. What is gonna pro- who it's going to protect is the hospital. If I, get, if I go to work in a hospital, they did not provide protective equipment for me. I get sick. I can sue them, right? But if right. CDC says, oh, no, you can wear a bandana, I can't. Hospital will say, oh, no, we followed CDC recommendations. We gave her a scarf. You know? Wow, that's so, screwed. It's all wow. about... And the thing is, I mean, it, it doesn't protect the doctor and it doesn't protect the patient. If you have to do a surgical scrub to go anywhere where you have to have a complete sterile environment, let's say any kind of surgery should be a sterile environment, but if you go into a thoracic surgery and you walk in with a scarf, how safe it is for anyone in that room, including the patient who is unconscious and- It's like in the wild west. Yeah. It is a wild yeah. west. I'm, be, like, I'm beyond disgusted by the CDC right now. The way they put all the medical professions, like all of us, they, the way they've treated us and they put us in danger, 
it, it's disgusting. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, we can make fun of China and uh, say, well, it's made in China, it won't last, it's China, China, China. But in, uh, in reality, and so laughed at China, they have a head to toe yeah. equipment to protect the doctors. Russia has head to toe protection yeah. in Dallas. And I'm still very doctors from Malaysia or anywhere doctors. else. Yeah. And so doctors to, in China don't have a toe protective toe. equipment. <laughs> doctors in Italy in full protective equipment dying and we're supposed to go with a scarf. Yeah. And that will oh, protect yeah. us? The thing I want to comment on too is it disturbs me is the fear mongering, the panic that the media and our politicians right. are pushing out there. And, um, and the other thing I think we need to be cognizant of and we need to be very, very aware of, we need to watch out for the politicians exploiting this crisis. Oh, they already are. That's a whole nother show. That's <clears throat> next time. We'll yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. We just wanna... <laughs> but you know what we need to remember? Like, we're like, this is really unprecedented. At the time, no one knows what's going on. No one knows yeah. what's going to happen. One thing we truly know, finally, now that we are isolated, we earn for that human connection and we realize who our friends are and we, like it's, it's a reminder to tell people that you love that you love them to uh to like reach out to people you might not have reached out love in you, a Jason. while yeah love you guys love you both. i love you man <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously like we're like what else are you gonna do you're stuck at home text someone you haven't talked to before tell remind them that they matter yeah yeah because that's what like and i think that's one good thing about this maybe it will uncover some humanity in us well that's a good idea yeah looking for the know. truth right now in this whole matter is like looking for legs on the snake you know you'll never find it but the thing is it's just us we just have to do what we have to do to protect ourselves protect yeah. our families protect our loved ones and just comply and hopefully whatever regime we're in yeah. will protect us at some point. Yeah. We gotta make sure they protect us. We, it's up to us to put the oversight on them. Well, we put them there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We have to. We trust we them to a degree. I understand that not everything is going to be disclosed to us. It's like, oh, I've done my research. So what's yeah. your research consist of? Well, I Googled uh, on a very trusted website. It's like, right. there the is Huffington no trusted Post website. So. <laughs> there is none. <laughs> I know Jen's a big fan of uh, the Washington Post, aren't you? <laughs> the what? <laughs> the Washington Post. Uh, yeah, I'm not even doing Snopes anymore. That one, that one's not one to use anymore. Either. I don't trust any of the sources anymore on any of it. I'm just, that's why I have to weed through all this stuff. And I'm like, show me some facts because it just, all of it just to me is nothing. Adds we got to talk to each other what we're seeing yeah. personally. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think so. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you the thing that scares the bejesus out of me. We don't know too much about the virus, but yet we know exactly how it looks. You see the pictures of that damn thing? No. <laughs> It's got a crown. Guess, it, looks, right? it, it, looks like, it looks like the moon with like these big warts, like, <laughs> yeah, warts all over it. Red, they're red warts too, right? It's like, no, those are scary. crowns. Oh, yeah, That's why they call it crowns. Crowns. Yeah, the crown. This is scary as hell. Crown, like yeah. Billie Eilish says. <laughs> Billie Eilish did it. That's that's. Exactly. <laughs> It's got to run this nothing town. <laughs> <laughs> it's like exact song just for that kind of a virus. Uh, Watch them yeah. fall one by one or whatever the words are. It's exactly what yeah. it is. Sad. Scary. Yeah. yeah, I do want to put a plug in really quick because I'm talking on about humanitarian efforts. I don't know if I sent this to you guys, Yulia, yet, but there is a group here and I'm part of it. So I support local. There's a bunch of us as business owners that are coming together and actually going to be collecting goods to donate to some of these elderly people and some of these immune compromised people that cannot get out. So if anybody's wanting to check that out, there's a page up on Facebook. It is I Support Local. Go in there, check it out. My uh, other podcast show that I'm on, we're part of that group. There's another group in there and then several other businesses, business owners. So it's a really neat thing. We're trying to collectively come together to help out. Around I love that people. idea. And we will yeah, drop the idea. link also when we yeah, post definitely. the video so yeah. people can click on that and learn more. And as always, um, if you love what you see and you want to be a part of our discussion, subscribe, comment, like, even dislike. 
<laughs> and your reaction is the reaction. Thumbs down. <laughs> I mean, everybody has to an down, opinion. Right? And as we are as real as they come, <laughs> Dallas, I mean, this is what we do. We're just keeping it real with people. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Some good conversation yeah. today. I was Very like awesome. soaking it all in and listening to you today. I was <laughs> not even talking as much as I normally do. There's a lot going on. <laughs> thank you, Masha, for all your insight. No. Yeah, thanks, say, Masha. I want to say I to do. you, we appreciate everything thank you're you. doing. I know you're on the front line and you're kicking butt. You're a rock star. And just know we all love you and appreciate you. Okay. okay. And if any of the listeners who are in N95, there are lots of us who are every day taking care of people airways, taking care of sick people who don't have it, who have to, have, who have only one and have to reuse it even though it doesn't, it doesn't really work after eight hours. So if, you have, if you've hoarded some, please give it to people on the front lines because it's that bad. We don't have it. And I want to thank all of our guests for being here. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Masha. And uh, Jennifer is my lovely co-host of this show. And uh, thank you, Bart, for being here and giving us your expert uh, opinion on what's going on in gold and silver market. And I want to give a huge thanks for people that are now on the front line, 18-wheel drivers, people that are making our pizza, people that deliver groceries to people that should not get them. All of the people out there that put in their lives on the line for the well-being of others. Huge thank you to you and uh, our love and to uh, protect y'all. And Thanks, this is Jason. a real thing on Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> By the time this is over, I'm going to be morbidly obese because I'm ordering myself cheesecake. And I'm going to have liver cirrhosis from all the wine. Seriously. <laughs> You're one of those that. hoarding toilet paper. Stop hoarding toilet paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be those people. Stop.